Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. Now this has to be the largest radio receiver that I've featured on the channel. And this is the new Texan S2200X. Now it's battery powered and covers long wave, medium wave, short wave, and FM broadcast bands, and including all of the ham radio HF bands and even air band up at around 120 megahertz. Now it has two inbuilt antennas, one telescopic and one which is rotatable. External antenna connections are also available, but more on that later. Now in the box, we get a user's manual, the radio itself, two rechargeable batteries, two BNC plugs, and a USB to USB-C cable. The two included rechargeable batteries are of the 18650 light ion type. The two included BNC plugs allow you to create your own cables or create your own antenna using your own supplied wire. The supplied USB to USB-C cable can be used with a regular phone charger to charge those 18650 batteries once they've been installed into the radio. Now, if you're a Yaesu fan and ever received a new HF radio, then you'll be familiar with the world map that comes with those radios. Well, this Texan radio, we get this rather large piece of paper, which on one side is an exploded diagram of the radio with all of its important features printed out. Now on the other side of this large sheet, well, it's a map of the world. Of course, something like this can be useful for radio DXs to mark the countries that they've heard radio stations from. The operation manual covers all of the features and functions, but to be honest, this radio receiver is quite easy to figure out and to operate without even reading a manual. However, it is there as a backup. Now the Texan S2200X weighs around 2.4 kilograms, so these handles on the side do make it nice and easy to position into place. Now as mentioned earlier, there is a rotatable long wave and medium wave antenna on the top. Now sometimes better radio reception can be achieved by moving a radio. However, with this rotatable antenna, it means you can leave this particular radio in its place and just move the antenna. A pull-out carrying handle is also found on the top and this just pulls out when needed. Now for shortwave, FM broadcast and airband, an internal telescopic antenna is also built in. Now this can be extended and then moved into position for best reception without even moving the radio itself. On the lower left of the front panel, we find an earphone socket for private listening. And next to this, there's a line in input which can be used with any external audio source, like a mobile phone, an MP3 player, or even a portable CD player, if they still exist. Now next to these sockets, we have a bass, treble, and volume control. Now each of these rotary controls have a super smooth feel to them and make adjustments to the received audio through the speaker above. Now the rest of the front panel hosts all of the main controls. To the left of the numeric keypad, we can choose between upper and lower sideband when listening to shortwave radio stations. Now that's primarily used when listening to the ham radio bands. A retro analog signal meter display can be found through that porthole located at the top. Now this indicates just how strong the received station is being received. The SW plus and minus buttons allow cycling through the shortwave bands, changing band upon each of the key pressing. Airband reception is also activated using the dedicated airband receive button located on the front panel. Now that large tuning VFO control is something we only normally see on ham radio transceivers, but this weighted, solid, smooth turning VFO makes fine or fast tuning into a radio station very, very easy. Now on the top right, there's a red power button, which obviously turns the radio on and off. And below this is a set of controls to activate features like sleep mode or add signal attenuation. You can also adjust the RF gain, squelch and fine tuning, all with these controls here. Now, incidentally, the RF gain control and the squelch control, if you turn them fully anti-clockwise, they will switch into an automatic position, meaning the RF gain would be automatic and the squelch would be automatic. So that's quite a nice touch from Texan. Down the left side of the radio, you'll find a USB-C socket, which is used to charge the internal batteries if they're fitted. Down the right side, we have a range of antenna sockets and switches. We have two BNC sockets, which are available for connecting to external antennas, one for shortwave and the other for FM broadcast and airband. 
the internal or external switch, which will choose whether the radio uses the provided built-in antennas or uses the external antenna BNC sockets. There's also a high impedance 500 ohm wire antenna input, meaning you can connect your own length of wire quickly and easily directly into that Texan S2200X. This provides many options for the user in terms of which antenna types to use. On the rear, towards the top left, you'll find two RCA type phono sockets. Now these are line output left and right, which you can feed to an external amplifier for either a boost in volume or clarity adjustment through an external equalizer. Now the two battery compartments are also found on the rear. The user can supply and fit their own d size alkaline non-rechargeable batteries or fit the two included rechargeable 18650 batteries like this. Now just be sure to set the switch according to the batteries which are installed and you want to use. Now that we've had a good look around the hardware itself, let's turn it on and demonstrate how well this radio receives. Now I'll test a few bands and let you hear them. Now what I do like is how good the air band sounds, which we will get to shortly. This thing called Treatment Action Group, and these people absolutely went out, they learned the science. Dave, I wasn't, I never on the TV, I was just after I was away from a boy who was interested in the, you know, building radios and so forth. I think it's a leading class. Uh, I don't think there's anything there as uh, transparent as it has been so forth, but it does fine. Uh, 40 degrees, it's pretty omnidirectional as well. So. Uh, the picture is taken in uh, in island of uh, Croatia. A te, caro, il K2 Golf Victor Sierra, o in 4 e con November Lima, Ogo. I don't have difficulty with, with well known people, people I work with closely. And with death. Christmas market. It was almost a ton of pies and included steak and ale, turkey and cranberry, and butternut squash fillings. That's only two one zero degrees with over each other. Getting quite a deal. Seven four thousand. Three hundred twenty. Hey, fam, we can go jump these axo and take up the hold. Uh, we'll need about ten minutes. If we've got a free speed, we can begin our exercise. And uh, then I'll call you when we're complete. No speed and direct to Jump Z and take up the Zaxo hold. Message at 884. Thank you. Good afternoon, London. Dream Z 300, flight level 340. Dream Z 300, good afternoon. 330, confirmed for a 6 kilopascal. Last heading 180 degrees, risk of 40. The radar was 390, 75 or 120. There are UDs with information echo. Now at the time of making this video, the Texan S2200X costs around 350 British pounds and it's available from the Moonraker website here in the UK. Now I'll leave a link below if you want to go and check it out. Now this radio also has some other cool features which includes auto tuning storage or ATS. Now this is where you can select a given band and perform a band scan. Every frequency which is found to have activity above a certain threshold will be stored to memory so that you can recall them at a later time. Now for more detailed information on these features, I'd recommend to download the manual to see if this is something that would be of use to you. Anyway guys, let me know what you think about this particular receiver down in the comments below. I'd be interested to know if you already own one and if you do, how do you get along with it? Until the next video, thanks for watching, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.